Well, all right. Well, I think we have Rocky on the on the telephone. Let me see if uh, if we can hear him. Rocky, can you hear us? Maybe he can, but we can't hear him. Is what it would appear to be. Hey, I'm there. Oh, there hey, we go. Hey, right. hey, 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 Rocky, can you hear <laughs> us now? Yeah, I got you. All right. So we are on the phone with the infamous Rocky Gray, famous for uh, for several bands. Rocky, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you, what what you have done in the past and when what you're what you're doing now? All right, well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Living Sacrifice, Soul Embrace, Heaven Essence, Even Devils Die. Uh, oh man, a lot of stuff, lots and lots of stuff. Solo projects uh, and uh, movie scores and uh, video game scores. Now, name a few. Yeah. Now, what about uh, what about uh, y- you're doing you're doing film work too, right? Be- besides be- besides music, you're, you're, well, you're you're doing some music sco- you're f- some film scoring, but are, are you actually you're doing also f- film uh, uh, filming and, and music video work? Yeah, yeah. Um, the company I work with, uh, Lycan Studio, we we've done music videos and stuff like that for for a few years and. Uh, yeah, this year I decided to uh, try my hand at uh, directing uh, a segment of a horror movie. So I'm trying that along with uh, scoring uh, the soundtrack for it as well. That's that's pretty awesome. Um, now you, you you also do uh, graphic artwork as well, right? Yeah, that's that's what I do with uh, Lycan Studio. I do uh, like After Effects and uh, stuff in Premiere and uh, illustration stuff as well so a little, a little bit of everything on the design and illustration side right and so you're actually just quite multi-talented then you know artistically musically <laughs> conceptually I'm, I'm, I'm trying i'm trying <laughs> all right and, and you're you, you guys are based out of little rock right still yeah or around yeah. that area yeah i'm out in cabin arkansas which is a little bit outside of Little Rock. But, I don't yeah, care. General it. area. Yeah, Little Rock is fine. <laughs> well, well, in the studio with us is uh, the Doc Rock, who is uh, associate professor of music here at the University of Oklahoma, and he he teaches a heavy metal music class for non-music right. majors. But he got his. It, it was your undergrad from masters. Arkansas. Oh, your master. He got his master's degree from Arkansas. So whoop pig suey, oh, nice. baby. So yeah, till I die, <laughs> till we die, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, Rocky, uh, uh, we're gonna play a, a couple of your tracks, and they're gonna be kind of a non-traditional tracks. You know, earlier earlier this evening we played some of your stuff from that you've played on, but I wanted cool. to play some of your your newer stuff, your your soundtrack stuff. So. Um, I thought I thought we might play. Uh, it's a track called "Undead." All right. <laughs> yeah, you wanna you wanna set that one up for us? Uh, well, the uh, my solo album "Accursed" is basically a uh, a film score for movies that don't exist. So each track would be from you know something inspired by Amityville Horror or Return of the Living Dead, things like that. So Undead is one of my, like, Return of Living Dead type things. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's kick it off.
So we are back with uh, Rocky Gray on uh, the Crimson Metal Show. Well, we just got finished listening to uh, one of his his solo tracks called Undead. Okay. Um, so uh, you guys got questions? Yeah. Rocky, this is Evan Taylor. I've helped Glenn with this show. I was curious, you'd, hey. brought, you'd brought up about some video game soundtracks that you've been working yeah. on, and I'm curious on what sort of genre, if you can even discuss, discuss that with us. Uh, for Killing Floor 2, all of that is more of the, uh, I would say, like, epic metal stuff. Um, maybe a little bit in the Zint genre and a little bit of industrial and a little bit of just death metal and thrash metal and power metal. I mean, it's a little bit of everything, but it's, it, it's a very metal soundtrack. Um so yeah, Killing Floor Two is all about that, and the uh, uh, the barn video game is all like eight bit sounding stuff. So I took songs from the barn soundtrack, and then I I made those into like eight bit uh, video game songs. Now, when they come to you with these projects, how much flexibility do the what did you usually get on what kind of music and you know how to put it it's, together? it's pretty it's pretty pretty laid back uh i get the call and and i'll submit something right away and most of the time it's you know i get the green light on that one and on to the next one i mean there's usually there's not a lot of problems with the the directors or the um the music department in, in the uh video games so it's been very easy so far uh, so far, I've had really good luck with um, working with some really awesome people. Awesome. Well, um, here, Joel wants to ask you something. So, um, when you do like movie soundtracks, um, are there specific uh, movie composers that uh, you've liked to get inspiration from, or or, or sounds or aesthetic um, guidance from? Yeah, I. Uh, I w- when I'm doing a, a movie, I, I really like to get in the zone and try to stay in the zone. So I listen to a lot of, um, I like Fabio Fritzi, which did uh, a lot of the uh, uh, Lucio Fulci, like Italian uh, horror uh, yeah. movies. And of course, John Carpenter. And I like Charlie Clouser. Um, man, I mean, there's a ton, a, a lot, a lot. I mean, all horror stuff, though, so I, I really get in the zone. Um, Rob and, Zombie, too? And feel, and feel, feel out, like, what the movie is, so I'm not, like, inspired by stuff that is not going to make a difference in the movie. So, you know, I'll, I'll find out what, what the vibe is for the movie and then kind of immerse myself in that kind of that kind of feel. So it's yeah. like, you know, it's, it's easy, easy to, like, churn out music because I'm, I'm immersed in it. So it's a little easier to get get there, you know. Yeah. Rocky, earlier I I, I put a shout out to uh, some some uh, fans and listeners about uh, any questions they might have for you. Oh, and cool. and I got one back from this 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 girl in Toronto. Her name is uh, Lindsay Schoolcraft, and she oh, yeah. she plays <laughs> keyboards for Cradle of Filth. Yeah. And she would like to know. What has happened to We Are the Fallen? Well, we've been on a break for a long time. <laughs> um, but I don't want to get anybody's hopes up or anything like that. But, I mean, everybody has been, like, all like on the same page about uh, trying to do some stuff again. So... I mean, there there is a chance very very soon that people will will hear from that again, but you never know. I mean, things pop up and then they go away. I mean, with all the projects that everybody in, and Weird Fallen does, it's very difficult to get everybody kind of situated where we can focus on just Weird the Fallen. But hopefully, we're on our way to you know achieving something this year. 
Okay, very nice. Okay, well, Lindsay, if you're listening, there, there's your answer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question, Lindsay. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. Rocky, in the studio, we have uh, a couple of guys from the band. That, that their, their former band was called Distal, and when uh, We Are the Fallen played here in Oklahoma City at the Diamond Ballroom, they were one of uh, the, your opening acts. And oh, so, cool. Uh, they're in here, and uh, you, got, you guys got a question for Rocky? Anything? Uh, what's up, Rocky? Hey, what's uh, going on, man? Hey, it's Blake and Justin here, uh, our band Hyperdose. Uh, I guess we would just ask you, uh, I mean, you've, you've probably been through the ups and downs of the industry and stuff. Um, I guess how do you, what's your mindset every day just to keep trying new things and being creative uh, versus, I guess, the mainstream kind of thing? Man, it's a, it's a hustle. I mean, doing it, doing it you know every day and not going to a regular job to keep from doing that regular job thing i mean it is hustle every day you know trying to find that next project to work on to keep you know keep going trying to stay relevant trying to you know um do something that uh, you know makes people go oh let's let's i want to hear more of that you know because you know especially in that I'm, I'm trying to really do the movie scores and, and game stuff now. It's like, I really need to really do something special. So it's, there's so many people doing it, you know, it's like, I, I've got to try to, you know, do something a little different and hope, hopefully I've done that. And so far it's worked out, but yeah, it's a hustle. Every single day is, you know, just busting your butt, you know, trying to, trying to, uh, you know, not not do the nine to five thing you know i'd rather do nine to five working for me and doing stuff that i love instead of for somebody else you know what i mean yeah man yeah but yeah we really enjoy all your stuff so so yeah good talking to you hey you hey, too man hey rocky one of the things i'm i'm curious about is you know what do you do to sort of relax to sort of get your creative energy back you know after all that hustle man i'm i love what i do so it's i almost don't really relax from it um, I love movies so much and I love music so I mean everything I do kind of evolves around it so even when I'm not working on music or working on a film I'm watching a film or listening to music <laughs> or you know like hanging out with the family you know on on downtime we're still I mean it's still movie time <laughs> you know so it's like that's just kind of what we do here you know uh, so that makes it easier for me because it's my passion. I, I love to do what I do. So I, it would be a little more difficult if it was like, you know, a hassle, you know, to try to, man, I got to try to get in, you know, the mood to do some music. It's not really like that. I might have to try to, you know, that's my whole thing with, you know, making sure I get in the zone when I'm doing a film. It's like, once I'm in the zone, it's, it's super easy. And, getting in the zone means okay I, I would watch movies and listen to this music that i would be listening to or watching anyways so you know it makes it pretty easy now uh, a lot of your a lot of your tracks and i, I think all of them really on your on your solo album really had a, a horror film type of feel to it is absolutely is is horror a, a particular favorite genre of yours yeah i, I really like all, all, all types of movies and, you know, comedies and sci-fi and um, dramas, but horror is, you know, that's the standout genre for me. That's that's my go-to. That's where I'm comfortable. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a no-brainer to do an album, you know, dedicated to horror movies. So, Rocky, uh, Central Oklahoma is um, known for, among other things, uh, country star Toby Keith. Who is from Moore, right Oklahoma? <laughs> He's from Moore, Oklahoma, and and he actually lives in Norman. He he lives about a mile and a half from me. Right, so. yeah, and and he made that as a choice. He was just like, I just don't want to live in Nashville, and so you have decided mm -hmm. to stay in Little Rock or Cabot, which is near Little Rock, like you said, and yeah, not move yeah. to like L.A. or New York or, or wherever. Um, why why did you decide to stay in Arkansas? Man, uh, one thing, it's home. And, and two, it's cheaper to live here. And three, um, 
in this business, you kind of don't want the competition. I mean, in L.A., you're competing against everybody. Uh, in Arkansas, uh, I don't know. I couldn't name one other person, really, that is doing horror movie soundtracks. Uh, I'm sure there is, but I, I just don't know who they are yet. But, well, I'm glad there's at least you know, one person in Little Rock doing them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, well speak, uh, speaking of Little Rock, um, how is the music scene there? Do, do you do you uh, do you you go out and uh, check out the new up and comers? I mean, when you when you when when Evanescence had first hit the scene, were you guys playing a lot of a lot of venues there locally? How did you guys get your first break there? Well, Evanescence didn't do a lot of shows before they got signed. I, I think they did like five shows, but the scene was good here at, at that time. At that time, the scene was good here. Um, Living Sacrifice has always done well here, um, but we came out when the scene was really good. So you know, get you know, get, getting a, fa- a fan base at, at that time. You know, if you're a good band, you know, you're you're going to get that fan base. Now, there's not a lot of places to play. I don't know a lot of the bands. I I, I love to go see good bands, but, you know, I've kind of done all that. I've seen so many shows. I, it's like, I kind of, I'm just, I'm a homebody a lot now, which probably doesn't get me as much work as I would if, if I was out networking or something, but... I'm such a homebody now. I mean, I, I just like working at home and, you know, doing my thing. But, yeah, the scene is not what it was. I mean, there are bands still. You know, there's people still trying to do things. Uh, the industry is just, for bands, the industry is not has not been kind uh, for the last, I don't know, five or six years. It's been very unkind to the bands. So it's it's very hard. Rocky, what do you mean by that? When you say it hasn't been kind to the bands, what are you thinking of in particular? Uh, I mean, to be able to get recognized and um, go on tour and and build that fan base that you have to have is very difficult. Uh, bands will go out and maybe get gas money, um, so it's very it's very difficult for you know four or five guys to if they are working stop working go play for gas money, go all around, you know, however many states is, you know, near you, whatever, and come back and hopefully pay your phone bill, you know, if you're still living at home or something, because most most fans that are trying to tour are really not grown dudes anymore, because they they understand, you know, it just can't be done if you have responsibilities. So most of them are kids, and they go out and play for gas money and after they do a couple tours if they're really trying to do something they're going to find out really quick how hard it is now that that doesn't go for everybody that's not a blanket like if you go out you're not going to make it go ahead and go home stop trying you know but generally i mean just a lot of bands are going to go out there and i know from personal experience from working with some of the bands I've produced some bands and they went on tour found out how hard it is went home and broke up it's, it's just like it's that like dream killer you know uh, level you know <laughs> so yeah yeah I'm jaded I, I, I get it <laughs> well <laughs> I mean I I, I um I saw Gosh, I was at a metalcore show in Tulsa at the Vanguard and with uh, War of Ages and, um, well, I've seen a couple of shows there. One was a bill with War of Ages and Phineas, and then another bill was with um, Fit for a King and Phineas and For Today. And, you know, they were saying they were all supporting each other, you know, from the stage like, like you should do. And, you know, but they were saying, like, hey, you need to buy some merch from these other bands so that they can make the next gig. So yeah. it wasn't even like, you know, coming away with a profit. And it was just to keep them on tour. Um, yeah, and that's where they're getting their money. That's they're crazy. Not getting, they're, not, they're not making the money from the shows, really. The show is like gas money. So any money that they can have for bills and try to live is for merch. Yeah. That's that's the that's the money maker. 
Yep. If you can't sell merch, you're really in trouble. And and what I've found is <laughs> you you got to have some initial capital to even buy the merch so that you can have it sell yeah. the shores. And merch is not is not cheap for up and coming young band. You know you know they all their money's tied up and their guitars and their amps and everything. And I have to tell you, yep. Rocky, that. I'm gonna go all fanboy for a second because I have uh -oh. to, I have to tell you I have to tell you a story that uh, what was it about 11 and a half years ago I went to Russia and uh, that's where I met my wife and at that particular point in time in Russia my immortal the video was played like like every hour and oh, wow. and, and so that became our song and so that <laughs> that song is our song and you're welcome with thank you <laughs> and uh, uh you know prior to that you know the, the bring me to life was such a huge song on the radio and i was like man this is this song just kicks so much ass and and i'd always been been a big fan of female fronted rock and hard rock and metal you know all the way back to doro and warlock and then uh you know, I even liked Alanis Morissette in the 90s when she had that going down in the <laughs> elevator song. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I was always a huge fan of that particular type of genre. And so uh, after we'd gotten married in a couple of years, you know, probably I guess it's been about nine years ago, we said, you know what, let's, let's start our own band. And, uh, and we kind of, the very first cover we ever learned was the uh, you never call me when you're sober <laughs> funny thing is is we never played we never played it live but that was the first song we learned and uh over time we ended up playing uh, bring me to life we played my immortal and we played uh saint john off of the we are the fallen album oh nice yeah so so we've we've played a lot of a lot of the your your songs in in the past and so we're huge fans now that's a oh, that's big, cool, man. That's a big long story to lead up into what we were just talking about. Is is during that period we had we had toured a little bit and we played a we played a show in Wisconsin with uh, uh, what was it called the uh, Capital not Capital Century Media All Stars Tour and uh, the biggest act there was in this moment. And oh uh, yeah. A bunch of a bu and they were all acts that were on Century Media, the Century Media's label, and a lot of those they were the same way. They were driving, you know, these piece of crap vans. Pull, you know, they 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 didn't have roadies. They were carrying their own gear in and out of this big venue, and it was this big, big, huge, you know, tour, and you know, very. I think only two two bands. One of them was was in this moment that actually had a tour bus, and. I think it act, their tour bus actually broke down on their way to uh, oh no uh, to Detroit. So uh, yeah, it, there's we we were lucky to we never even made gas money. I think we made gas money once, and that was about it. But that that's was, harsh, man. Yeah, that was when we went to Martin, Tennessee. I think we made three hundred bucks for that show. But, uh, and you guys were a part of the package. No, we weren't. We we had actually gone up to Chicago to play a uh, a festival called uh, Dame Nation. So it was all these female fronted rock bands. And uh, right while we were there, the very next day, the the Century Media uh, All Stars tour was going to be in in I think it was what Milwaukee is it right next to Chicago. Yeah. Is that Madison? Madison. No, in Mil huh? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. To Chicago. It was it was Milwaukee, and it was the next night, and. and I, I just we we were lucky enough to get on and be on the, one of the side stages, so we went over right there on. and played. And well, y'all were lucky to get paid anything at all. A yeah. lot of times when there's a package tour, it's like, I mean, if you you can play if you want to, but I mean, there's no money, or yeah. Yeah. or it's like, yeah, you could pay us and you can play, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the worst we ever got paid was San Antonio. We got paid two dollars. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, that was great. That was uh, that was the venue booking four out of town bands and no locals, and then not promoting it. Yeah, and that was the last tour y'all ever did. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was fun while it lasted. I, you know. That that's that's exactly what I'm saying. That that is exactly what happened to a lot of the bands that, and obviously y'all were old enough to 
to understand that, I mean, you can't just go around and make no money. Oh, yeah. It's just well, impossible. We, we were actually old enough that, that we had, you know, jobs and mortgages and cars and kids. And so yeah, it was yeah. fun. Any, were, any responsibilities, it's like, yeah. I, it just cannot happen. This no. is just not how we can do this. Well, we knew we weren't going to make any money anyway because there was no way we could actually just quit our our existence, our lives, and go out and just hit the road and live show to show. So yeah, that, that even gets rough, even more man. difficult. Yeah. So man. All right. Well, it, 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 yeah, it, it's hard to hear all that, but man, it, that's how rough it is. It I is. Mean, it, it is. I and, mean, and 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 uh, Blake and. Justin, I know you guys have played a lot of a lot of shows. Do you have any similar experience? How, how do you guys? Because you you guys don't have kids. You guys aren't married. You guys get all the hot chicks at your shows, and <laughs> I, I see I see pictures of you guys all the time on Facebook, and every time it's some with some new hot chick. So, uh, <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, what everything you're saying is resonating. I mean, obviously we. Have, not to to your level or anything, but anytime we've been on tours, it's been the same thing. Just trying to not be 130 degrees and burnt when you woke up, or not trying to be frozen when you woke up, or just trying to make it to the next place. But that's kind of added. It's been fun at times for sure, but definitely that's all with this band. We're just kind of focused on recording and and uh, you know building our fan base and just doing the things that we can, you know, and yeah. trying to figure out a way, but. But yeah, that's a good attitude, man. I mean, all those Walmart parking lots. I mean, that gets really sucky after a while. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> so, Rocky, do you have any any really neat disaster stories about about being on the road? Man, not really. No. I mean, all, all my stuff's so boring. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just like yeah, we go play shows and we go home. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll never forget the time we were driving out to L Las Vegas, and our drummer threw a hissy fit in Flagstaff, and just he just walked away, and we're stuck there in Flagstaff, going, "Where is he? Is he coming back? We have a show to play in like five hours." <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the good good times like that. What about what about you, uh, Blake? Any any disaster stories to? Uh, gosh, like, I mean, I can remember w one time in Memphis, uh, we're actually, I think we we're recording, but Justin, I remember I woke up and he was, ne he was next to me on the couch, and then I woke up and he wasn't there, his phone was there, and actually the only way to get out of the door was like you had to push some code and do something that's hard enough, like in real life, but when you're like, I don't know if you sleepwalk, I really, yeah, I sleptwalk outside, man, uh, you can only have had to have a key to get back in. So I woke up that morning, just on the sidewalk, looking at the door, like, <laughs> "What's going on?" And I didn't have my phone with me, so I couldn't contact anybody in the band. So luckily, the van was open, even though it was like 150 degrees in there. Otherwise, I just tried to walk around the town and find a phone to have somebody let me in. But I ended up sitting in the van for about four hours until it, someone finally came outside. And, and what Dude. part of Memphis was it? Because Memphis uh, it was can Bill get Street. pretty sketchy. Oh, yeah. That, that bad part. The studio yeah. was right on Bill Street, so it was, I mean, walking distance from there. Yeah, yeah, and we're twin. We're identical twins, so we're like, I was like, where is he at? And I, <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> well, speaking of, what was that? How hot was it? Probably, it felt like 150, but... That was just in the van because, you know, no air conditioning or whatever. But it was probably outside 80 or 90, but just in the van. Yeah, you know, was like I'll, I'll never forget, uh, we played a show in Stillwater. And uh, this was this was probably five, five six years ago. It was that same same summer that we went in, to Chicago and everything. And uh, the venue calls me that afternoon and goes, man, our... Our sound guy double booked his PA. We don't have a PA. Can you guys bring your PA? And I said, Yeah, sure, I'll bring my PA. So we get down there, and this this is the summer when it's like 113 degrees out. And we get we get to the to the venue, and he's like, Oh man, I got bad news because the air conditioner's broke. I'm like, All right, well. I guess we'll make do, and, and we load in all that PA, and we load in all our gear, and I mean, it's, like I said, it's 110, like, I feel, it, I think it's like 110, 113 out in direct sunlight, 
And then we go inside that venue and there's no air conditioning and it got so hot that the power amps for the PA were, were clipping and, and shutting down <laughs> during our set. And then the, the <laughs> power amps were shutting down. It was, it was nice. So yeah. good times. Yeah. What we, what Rock and roll. The, the things we suffered uh, to play our music. <laughs> You guys oh, yeah. are suffering for Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> <Hard>. <laughs> well, Rocky, um, is there anything that uh, you would like people to know about what you're doing right now? Like what, what how they could Man, uh, find out more information that, about you, how they could get a hold of you if they wanted you to design some Alma Bart work, or maybe they need a music video? Yeah, they can uh, hit me up at uh, Lock and Studio on Facebook or uh Hit me up on my personal Facebook, William Rocky Gray, on Facebook or Twitter um, at Rocky Gray, and uh, keep an eye on uh, Rocky-Gray.com for uh, any updates on you know music and films and things like that. But yeah, I'm 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 on Facebook all the time, so everybody's more than welcome to hit me up. All right, well, Rocky, we're gonna we're gonna play another one of your tracks. This is the made title sequence to to the Barn Horror. Want to tell oh, us a little man. bit about this and how you came up with it? <laughs> man, it just sounds like a cool opening uh, main title theme. Now, <laughs> it's, it's one of people's favorite ones. I, I I personally like it myself too. Now, do you use a particular type of? Uh, do you use particular plugins? What do you have a, a go-to plugin that you use when you're composing your stuff, or a particular keyboard you like to use? Uh, a sequencer? Man, it's 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 always different. Um, it's nice to keep everything real fresh, but uh, for the barn, uh, I used the guitar rig on a lot of stuff. So and, native, uh, native instruments. Yeah, yeah, I use Contact for oh. pretty much everything. Um, so I just, man, I have, I just start collecting everything. Um, so, so there's a, you know, a library, a, a big library of stuff to choose from when it's time to. Uh, start working on some new music that way you know you have some fresh instruments that you maybe you hadn't heard or you can tweak on and make sound a little different than the last time you know all right well let's uh let's cue up this this track this is called uh i guess it's just called main titles here we go yeah <laughs> 